Hello, welcome to Circle of Love. And today we're going to be working on Father's Day or Father inspired memory cards. Again, you can interpret this in, in many different ways, and I'll be talking more about that as we go. But I want to remind you about supplies. Here on my desk, I have the blank sheet of paper. I'm going to go ahead and fold this in half right now, actually. Okay. Okay, I'm just taking it and folding it in half and now leaving it in a card format. This card is a greeting card style card, but if you instead want to use a different type of card or version of a card or idea of card, feel free to do that, okay? I also have a pile of various magazines. You can see my magazines are not always in great shape. You don't need perfect nice new magazine, okay? I also have a marker, actually a few different markers. You can use colored markers, you can use permanent markers. I've got scissors and I've got glue stick right here. Lots of, lots of things, okay? All right, um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to invite you to either look through your magazines for images that remind you of a father in your life. Now I say a father because maybe you have a father that's with you in your home that you get to see every day and that you get to enjoy every day. But maybe you have a father that's no longer with us or no longer with you, okay? Um, or maybe you have a father that is still um, around, however, maybe just not someone that you interact with frequently, okay? But the idea is that you're going to look for pictures and you could look for words that remind you of your father or a father in your life in some way. So I'm going to give you an example, okay? I found this picture here um, that actually is a man, right? He doesn't look like my father looks, but he reminds me of my father in that my father was sometimes showing me things, little things like helping me to notice, for example, patterns in nature, the way that leaves grow or beautiful, but other beautiful things in nature. And here are these flowers that I really love. Um, he was always telling me stories. And I feel like this man in this picture is almost kind of like in the position of he's telling a story um, or, you know, presenting something, putting on a show for others. Okay. So that's one way that this picture reminds me of my dad. Um, if I look through this magazine, I'm going to keep looking for words or pictures or ways that again, remind me of my dad. Ooh, I found something right here. Where did it go? So my dad went on some adventures in some jungles in Ecuador that he often tells me about. And right now, these pictures are reminding me of some of the jungle um, images that he was describing to me. So what I'm gonna do when I find these pictures and images I'm just going to tear them out. I'm going to make a pile. Okay. I'm just going to make a pile. That's what we're starting with. And I'm going to keep looking to see what other pictures, and maybe you don't have pictures, so many pictures, because maybe you don't have very many magazines. That's okay. Then start collecting these extra papers, okay, scrap papers that maybe you have around that are different colors. I'm going to show you another way that we can go about this project today. Let me see if I can find any other images that I want to use, okay, or pages that I want to use. Now today, the creation that you end up with can be something you keep for yourself and enjoy for yourself, or it could be something that you do give away to someone like your father, okay, or someone else who is important to you in your life that you might think of as a father. All right, here we go. I also want to show you another interpretation of this project that you can try if you're interested, okay? 
So um, in this example, you can see that I've used tiny little torn pieces of different colored papers that I actually got out of my magazine pages. And so instead of using the entire image, what I did is I tore it up into smaller pieces of just the colored area of the picture. So I could tear this area of green into small pieces or tear this area here of this light kind of purple or lavender into small pieces, okay? And you can assemble it to create a picture. So here what I did is I was trying to work on creating a image of a person's head. Specifically, this is representing my father, okay? And here you can see an ear. And actually my father doesn't have hair anymore. He is totally bald, which is why here there really isn't much to look at except for this rounded area, okay? So I used a combination here of just torn pieces of paper to assemble into a collage, kind of more of like an abstract looking collage, like a Picasso style collage. But I also use down at the bottom, some images of things that he loves. When I'm thinking about the things that I know about my father that he loves, he loves boats, sailboats, and the ocean. So I put some ocean here and some sailboats and some more ocean right here, okay? And those can kind of be used as his body, the area where his body would go, or maybe his shoulders, okay? Um, so that's another thing that you can do. And now after you've collected and gathered some, oh, actually before I forget, if you are working in this style, then these extra pieces of colored paper will come in handy. You can use those also to do some tearing and gluing together to make a picture, okay? But for right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on my folded background, okay? And I'm gonna start by adding some colored paper. And I'm really just gonna tear like this different pieces of these different colors of paper, Let's see. And even some of these magazine pages like this. Okay. And I'm gonna start gluing them down together to fit right here on my card. And I'm really just making a background, okay? And when I say background, it doesn't mean there have to be any pictures in there yet. So I'm gonna put some, some of this torn paper right there. Let's see here. Maybe I'll use some of this. Ooh, you know what? Maybe I'll use some of this paper that I have that's got some words on it, some writing. See that? It's for fun. Tear that. I'm gonna take a little bit more of this uh, jungle page, remember that I found in the magazine. I'm gonna take some more of this green area. And many times you don't have to actually end up using the pictures that you see on the page. Sometimes it's enough if you just remember that this page reminded you of a jungle and then take little pieces of it like this. And every little piece, even though now it's a smaller, unrecognizable image, you know that it is still a part of that jungle area, or I know that it's still a part of that. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking time right now to fill this page. Let's see, I'm gonna look for some more, maybe I'll put some of the, there we go, right there. Notice I'm not doing any gluing yet. First, I just wanna lay things in place. Okay, and just kind of see how they're gonna look before I glue them. And you might be still looking for images, that's fine. Or pages or papers, that's fine. Or colors, that's fine too. You can also, if you want to use here in this background colors that you think your dad might like. Okay. Maybe use a variety of them. All right, I'm just assembling them right now. I'm not really, 
paying too much attention about where they go. I'm really just making them fit together like a puzzle is all. Just want them to fit on there. And because I like having borders like this around my images or on my cards, I'm gonna leave some empty white space around. So I'm not putting the pieces all the way against the edge. Okay. Let's see and then with more of this one. And as you're thinking about your dad and or your father, and you are looking for ways that you can even create an additional connection or, or um, bring the two of you closer together to each other, you can even put colors here together that you both like, okay? So you can use simple ways like that to build more meaning into your work. Let's see, I'm going to... I feel like I want, I need a little bit more here to fill this space. So I think I'm going to do, let's do some of this one. I'm going to turn this one to make it fit better. And maybe that one can fill that spot. Okay. So you can see this is now filling this whole area. Okay. All right. And now what I'm going to do, and, and by the way, if you're working in this style today, it's the same process that I'm using here where I've torn up little pieces of paper, okay, and I've kind of laid them out in an area. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoot them off. I'm going to put glue all over my entire surface, and then I'm going to start placing them on. So that's one approach, okay? If I'm going to be using this image, which I am in just a moment, First, I'm gonna glue down all of these as my background, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna add this on top of there, okay? I'll show you in a moment how I'm gonna do that. Okay, so here I'm gonna scoot these off. Now, after I've cleared these off, notice I scooted them off very neatly and carefully. So they're kind of sort of still in order down here. Move that out of the way. I'm going to put glue stick like this. I'm just basically rubbing the glue stick <clears throat> all over the whole area. For me, this is the easiest way to do it. But if you have a different way that is easier for you, go for it. Okay. Get a little more glue stick on this side. Okay, so I know you can't see my glue because it's clear, but it is on there. You can now see my papers kind of shiny everywhere. Okay, I have glue everywhere. And I'm just gonna come back and I'm gonna now place these pieces back on here how I had them earlier, okay? Start with this one here. And as I go, I might even make this a little bit neater so I can get a, a little bit of a neater edge there. Yes, you might feel like glue is getting everywhere, but it's good to get your hands messy and your fingers messy when you're dealing with creativity. Sometimes you might even need to add more glue because you're overlapping two areas, okay? Keep going, I'm gonna add more glue in these areas. I want this piece to overlap. And this way you get all of your edges nice and flat or to stay down nice and flat. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add this one here. I'm overlapping this piece a little bit, so I'm gonna put more glue for that edge. This piece here, and since it overlaps here, I'm just going to put a little more glue over those edges. Piece. 
And now I'm just continuously filling all of the spaces, okay, until I have my background complete. It's almost like a puzzle. I have a lot of different puzzle pieces and now I'm putting the puzzle pieces together. And I noticed that as I'm putting, placing all these back on, this one is the last one left here, but if I do put it here, it's going to be a lot of the same. So I'm thinking about if that really matters to me. And if it does, then I'm gonna go and try to find a different piece to put right here. And if it doesn't matter to me, then I'll just leave it. And I think right now it doesn't matter to me because I think I'm gonna end up covering it anyway. <clears throat> so I'm just going to go ahead and put this right on there. Okay. All right. <clears throat> there are all of my pieces. Almost, I feel like it's kind of like a quilt that I've assembled. Okay. And I'm coming back to this image that I found earlier that I described that does remind me of just some of the, the ways that my dad <clears throat> um, helped me to appreciate um, things that I find in nature or things I find in my surroundings um, and the stories that he would talk about and from his life experience. And sometimes at the time, I might feel like, oh, dad, you know, that's a long story. You've already told me this story before. I don't know if I have time right now that I want to listen. Um, but when, I, when I'm like this, focusing on him and everything about him and what he has taught me, those are the kinds of things that I remember most is his stories. So... Actually, I do appreciate them. They do make a big impact on me. They help me to realize that I'm learning a lot through his stories. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking time, instead of tearing, I'm cutting this picture so that I can get these nice, clean, neat edges. Sometimes you can create a really, really interesting effect by simply using tearing for one part of the project and cutting for the other part of the project. And that just gives you a nice contrast, which is just another artistic effect. Okay, let's see. I think I'm going to cut the hand here without the poster. And as you go, you get to make these creative decisions. What part of the picture are you going to keep? And what part of the picture are you going to get rid of and why? What parts are most important? And I think I'm going to, I, think I might just include a little bit of these horses right here. There. There you go, but not the people. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut that bottom part off. And here's what I have left. And I'm noticing that it's a little bit longer than I want it to be because I like to keep this white border. Just that's my own personal choice. Or unless I turn it this direction, and maybe it'll fit better that way. Hmm. I'm gonna think about that. I'm just gonna leave it like that and think about it, okay? Now, I'm not gluing it yet, okay? Because now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go and see if there are any other images that I can fit here that also go along with my theme or my ideas about my dad. Remember that I talked about him showing me things about nature. Oh, you know what? happen to find this other picture of these beautiful flowers right here. 
I love those flowers. And that's reminding me also about some of the things that my dad would show me often. I think that's one of the reasons why I love studying nature so much. Sometimes even if we feel like we have frustrating or challenging relationships with our parents, you know, we can often still find something that we did learn or something that we did receive, a lesson that we've gathered from them in some way. And when we have close and happy relationships with our parents, in particular our fathers, then it's easier, right, to find those ways that we've gathered wonderful things from them, wonderful experiences. Okay. I am cutting out these leaves, this nature area. And as I'm doing that, I'm noticing there is one little piece right here that's sticking out, this one. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try cutting it out and I'm gonna try placing it here in his hand like, like he's showing it to me. And the rest of them, I'll just use other places on the card. But let me work on that real quick. I'm going to work on that. But this looks like something that's really neat that we would both look at together. And he loves flowers. My dad just loves flowers. Bright colored flowers. There we go. This is something that I would like, this little poppy pod. So I'm gonna just leave it there. I'm not gluing it yet, actually. I'm just still gonna leave it there just to kind of wait and see where I want it to end up. Now these other plants, I think what I'm gonna do is just use this part like that. Maybe here, notice how I'm setting this piece down and I'm holding it with one hand. And then to get a nice clean edge at the bottom, I'm taking my scissors and I'm just trimming like this. There. Okay. What I have now, I've got this area being my dad or a man that represents my dad, right? And he's holding something out, like he's showing maybe showing me something that's really neat that I really like, this little, little puppy pod. And then over here, we've got some more neat flowers and nature that is one of the main things that I think appreciations that I've gotten from him, okay? And I feel like this could be enough information for me. I don't have to have everything on here, um, you know, that's related to my dad. If, if it's just one thing and one special thing, that's enough. But I do notice that if I put this in his hand there, this item is green. This item here is green and it's lining up on this other green piece of the background. And I want it to stand out more. So I'm thinking I'm gonna go try to find a new piece to cover this green background here with, okay? All right, let's see what I can find. I wonder what it would look like with this color background. Does that stand out better? Oh, yes, it does. It really does. So I'm gonna do that. Trim this. Glue this on top right there. So what we're doing is we're working with materials that maybe normally would go into the trash 
and we're giving them a new purpose. And we're also using practicing creativity by then figuring out how we can assemble these materials together to make them work. It's really important. There we go. And in that process, we're learning to find solutions for things. When we're practicing finding new solutions or doing working on troubleshooting, um, those are ways we build our resilience. Those are ways we make ourselves stronger. Right? And then when we look for meaning in things that might like personal meaning, in things that might not normally have a ton of meaning, we are also developing our identity. We are growing our resilience that way as well. And we're empowering ourselves. So there's a lot of work happening here in this project that we're doing. Some important work. Okay, I feel like I have enough information here on my card now. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these pieces that I cut with scissors and I'm going to start gluing them down now permanently in the place where I want them. And I decided that before I was really concerned about trying to keep this white border completely plain, right? But actually now after I put these other pieces on, it doesn't bother me anymore. So I'm not going to worry about it anymore. Okay, we can change our minds. Artists change their minds all the time. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add my glue to the back of this image. So this project is partly an experience for you personal experience for you to kind of take a journey again um, uh, and, uh, through the relationship you have with your father. And then in the end, make some decisions if you need to about it, make some new discoveries maybe about it, develop a new relationship or perspective maybe of it. If that is something that you feel you need there we go. And at the very, very, very end, create something that you get to keep for yourself that is meaningful to you or something that you get to share or give away that will be meaningful to someone else. And there's a lot of work we're doing here in this very simple activity. Right, so I've got glue on the back of this piece, but now I need glue on the back of this little thing right here. Place my little poppy flower in its place and now I have all of my features glued down, okay? If just the pictures from the magazine or the colored paper background is enough and you feel like this is complete, then you are welcome to begin uh, writing inside the card. And if the writing that you're working on is, uh, well, actually, if this card project that you've created is gonna be something you wanna keep for yourself, again, as a memory, of your relationship or your father, um, then you can work on writing that is for yourself. So you can describe the memory that you just illustrated or explain your feelings or your experiences, okay? But if this is gonna be a project that you instead give away to a father or your father or someone else special in your life, then you can write a message to them, okay? Telling them what you want them to know about you, okay, about your experiences as well. Also, if you feel like your image still needs some other finishing touches or details, you're welcome to use marker to add any outlines or a border if you want to, or even writing 
um, in there. And I think what I'm gonna do is I see that there's some black left over here from the from the image that I cut out. And I kind of like that. So I'm gonna add a little more in some other areas just to make it match. Like I'm gonna add some right here. Okay. Maybe all that, let's see here. Maybe I'll add some right here. Just little details. You get to decide where your details go. It's your choice, you're the artist. There. And then I will take time. I think this project here will be one that I keep for myself to enjoy and remember the um, wonderful gifts of appreciation of nature that I did get from my dad. And I really like this uh, memory. And so this is actually going to be a memory card that I keep. Um, I, I have this other one that I did show in my, again, my example on my website or on my email invitation. And this one is the one that I plan to give to my dad. Um, so I'll write a message in there for him. This one again shows how he sees himself as an alien um, being because of all the different illnesses that he has and that his doctors cannot completely figure out. And so that's his way of um, bringing humor into the situation. And so he and I often joke about how he is actually really an alien and not um, a human being. That's just a joke and that's just a way that we relate and that we find some fun together, okay? So this is gonna be the one that I give to him and um, this will be the one that I keep for myself. And maybe you also would like to work on more than one version of this project and one that you get give away and one that you get to keep, okay? But for now, I am going to get ready to stop my recording. For those of you who are joining me live, keep going. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Okay. And for those of you who were joining me by recording, thank you so much for trying out this project. I hope you enjoy this activity. And I really hope that you join us again sometime. Okay. Take good care and lots of love to you.